Hey folks, Ray BCGamerica.com here. Today I'm going to give you 12 things to know about the new Polar Ignite GPS watch. Well, this thing was just announced today. I've been using it for the last week or so. Actually, this one here on my wrist. So I've got a pretty good idea on how well it works, what works well, what doesn't work so well, but more importantly, what's new about it. And what might surprise you is unlike the Vantage and the Vantage Titan V, 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 v the Titan, um, watches that Polar announced about a year ago and a few months ago, this actually has more features, which is kind of crazy considering it's only 200 bucks. And that 200 bucks is not part of your 12 items to know, it's just a freebie I'm, I'm throwing out there. Uh, speaking of which, this video is not sponsored in any way, shape, or form. These are standard media PR loaners. They'll go back to Polar uh, pretty darn soon here. As soon as I start shipping, I'll send these back and get my full in-depth review out. So with that, let's dive into number one on the list, which is the display itself. This is probably the most notable thing about this unit. It is a full color touchscreen display. Uh, so so very similar in terms of touch as the Vantage V watch, but far more brilliant. You can see the side by side here uh, and the colors and whatnot aren't even in the same ballpark as a Vantage watch. They're just way, way, way above it. The downside to that though is the fact that it is not an always on display, which means it's very similar to like an Apple watch or most of Fitbit watches, where when it's not on, like this watch right now, when I'm not looking at it, you can see it's, it's black, it's blank. I have to turn it like this and then the time shows up. Of course, the reason they do that is to save battery life. The more brilliant the display is, the faster it burns through battery life. So they go ahead and turn off the display when you're not using it in hopes to save that battery life. There is however one tactile button on the unit, which is this side button right there. You use that for going back as well as to access some of the menu items. Uh, but for the most part, navigation is done via the touchscreen using your finger. Oh, before we get too far into this whole thing, if you're finding this video useful or interesting or whatever the case may be, go ahead and just whack that like button right now at the bottom there. It really helps with the video and the channel quite a bit. Next on the list is right into the features that the Vanta series watches do not have, which is the new Sleep Plus Stages functionality. What that does is it basically goes ahead and it gives you your sleep data in terms of light sleep, uh, deep sleep, REM sleep, and so on, but it also gives you a sleep score. And then as part of that, you're also to see things like respiration rate and whatnot, a ton of new sleep related metrics that show up for every single night you track your sleep. And that's different than the next feature I'm gonna talk about in just a second. But the sleep plus stages is all about kind of gathering the baseline data for your sleep and then giving you more reporting data and more kind of detailed data on what happened each night, interruptions, all that kind of stuff. And so far, I think it's been roughly pretty accurate for me. Uh, but again, I wanna see like longer multiple weeks and months to see how well that really works out. But what's probably far more interesting is number three feature on the list, which is a new nightly recharge functionality. What this does is that basically tries to figure out whether or not you've recovered uh, from the previous day by sleeping at night. So as it kind of applies nightly recharge, it basically looks at your day and say, are you fully recharged? Was that good sleep or was it interrupted sleep? So it does that via breathing rate, as well as heart rate, as well as heart rate variability. Uh, so this is the first watch that I'm aware of that is using that breathing rate as part of this entire metric um, for some sort of nightly recharge. For example, Garmin has something similar to that called body battery and so does Asunto as well called resources. But those to best of my knowledge are only using uh, heart rate variability data as opposed to using breathing data as well. So I think it's really cool to see companies starting to kind of push that barrier forward a little bit, as opposed to right now, we sort of got to like the body battery resources wall there, but hadn't gone to the next step. Which gets into number four new feature, again, not on these watches down here, which is called FitSpark. Uh, and the idea behind this is giving you training guidance for each given day, but more importantly than anything else done in the past, doing that based on your nightly recharge data. In other words, your sleep data, which is super logical. It's something I've been talking about for years, the fact that you get training guidance every single day of, you know, go run this number of miles or hours or whatever it may be, and you get your sleep data, but those two were never tied together. If you had a crappy night's sleep, it would still tell you to go out and do a two and a half hour long run. Not super useful. Now they're tied together. Uh, the idea is that it takes your training history, your recovery data, and then also your sleep data, and particularly your nightly recharge numbers, pulls it all together and then gives you actual workouts. And this is where it gets really interesting. So the way you access it is going ahead right into this main menu. You can swipe the different screens here, but the one you're looking for right here is the one that basically shows uh, these kind of top sections right there. So you see cardio is what it recommends me doing right now. I simply tap this. There we go. And you can see there are strength options, cardio and support it. So right now it gives me a recommendation of one hour, 38 minutes of long cardio, or I can tap this more button right there. And now it's gonna give me a couple options. I can do the cardio long for 138. I can do the cardio medium for 58 minutes. I can do a core regular workout for 20 minutes, mobility dynamic and so on. So if I were to go ahead and click on this mobility dynamic one right there, you'll see that I scroll down, it gives me some different suggested moves to do. So you call the Ferris wheel, inchworm, groiners, scorpion, Let's just click on Scorpion for the moment. 
And then you can see here, it's telling me exactly the steps for how to go ahead and do the particular move. And this is also true if I go back into the cardio ones as well. So go up here, we'll choose this cardio medium right there for a second. We'll go on down and you'll see there's the intensity phases right there. And for this one, it's pretty straightforward where there are some more difficult ones here, kind of interval style ones that you would see uh, the detail a bit better there. And it was cool is that yesterday after my run, so I did my, my cardio workout, then it shifted to giving me supportive workouts. So things that were like stretching focused, uh, recovery focused, kind of sort of like trending towards yoga a bit, that made sense to do after a run. So really, really cool stuff and definitely leaps and bounds above what we've seen uh, Garmin recommendations do or certainly Fitbit or Apple recommendations that don't really have any meaningful recommendations, but definitely more than what Garmin's doing today in terms of giving you suggestions for workouts and workout guidance. Next on the list is number five, which is the serene guided breathing exercises. Now, of course, this isn't something like Polar just thought about out of nowhere. We've also seen on Apple and Fitbit and other watches and whatnot. And it basically just guides you through doing kind of a chill and relaxed breathing exercise sort of thing. So by default, that's a three minute long exercise where you're breathing in for five seconds and then exhaling for five seconds and repeating the time over and over again until you get to the end of three minutes. Uh, you can adjust the time, durations, all that kind of stuff, and then it records that history into the watch itself so you can go ahead and check on the results later on. It made me relaxed, I guess. Like I, I tried out yesterday, but it was Friday afternoon. So I'm gonna be pretty chill and relaxed at that point because it's the end of the work week. So yeah, I mean, if you're gonna use it, use it, it's great. I suspect most people will probably never use it. However, number six on the list, you will definitely probably will use, which is a new optical heart rate sensor. Well, actually it's not really new. It's the exact same sensor as the Vantage series, Vantage V, Vantage M, Vantage Titan, all the Vantages. It's the same exact sensor, best I can tell. Um, and you know, for the most part, it works fairly well. Uh, Polar has a crap ton of LEDs in there. Uh, it's actually the most LEDs out of anyone else in the entire industry, uh, though I don't think it actually has the best accuracy. I think uh, Apple still, as of 2019, reigns supreme on optical heart rate sensor accuracy, not GPS, just optical heart rate sensor accuracy, but it's there. It's doing 24 by seven monitoring as well as workout monitoring. Oh, and speaking of sensors, this does have GPS in it, of course, uh, so you're not relying on your phone for anything, which is definitely notable because at 200 bucks, Fitbit doesn't put GPS in there. So GPS is in this. Uh, it's the exact same Sony GPS chipset as the Polar Vantage series that we had from last September. So that means it's, it's not in entirely awesome. Um, and in this particular case, for this particular unit, uh, it's maybe a little less awesome at this point than, than these ones so far in my testing. Uh, but definitely check out my full testing accuracy results linked in the description down below there, my kind of complete uh, preview and eventually review and whatnot, because I'll have the most up-to-date results with the most up-to-date firmware on how things are cooking in this. Number seven on the list is battery life. And this is a really quick and simple one. Five days in just kind of general smartwatch mode and then up to 18 hours in GPS on mode. Uh, now keep in mind, it is not always on display. So unlike the rest of Polar's watches and Sunto and Garmin and whatnot, which have always on displays, this one will automatically turn off as it is right now on this wrist until I raise it up again, as we talked about earlier. Number eight on the list is sensor support. It does have Bluetooth smart sensor support. So you can go ahead and pair a Bluetooth smart heart rate sensor to it and a cycling sensors to it, but not a cycling power meter. Also no amp plus support at this time either. Maybe that'll change. They have the chips in there to do that. We'll see what happens there. Number nine on the list of features here is running index, which is Polar's marketing term for VO2 max. Now there are actually two different ways to go ahead and get VO2 max on this watch. Number one is simply just to go run your ass outside. And when you get done, it'll actually give you the running index number as part of your summary results. And number two is to not run at all, which sounds awesome. Sit in a couch, lay down, and then wait about three or four minutes or so. And it'll give you uh, via the fitness test functionality, that same number. Uh, but same isn't quite true. It gave me two totally different numbers. When I did the inside lying down test, it gave me about 46 or so. And then outside, I believe it gave me 56 or so. Uh, quite a difference there. My measure VO2 max is just a touch above 60, 61, 60 is usually what I've tested at in the past. Uh, most watches I've tested generally tend to give me between 56 and 60 or so. So this is a little bit low perhaps, but it's also been a couple of years since I've VO2 max tested. Keep in mind, VO2 max doesn't generally change for people. Once they've reached their like fitness plateau, if you will, it stays there. Otherwise you'd have all the pro athletes in the world with crazy high VO2 maxes and most of them tend to plateau at a certain level. Still, it's there, it's in the watch, so enjoy.
Next number 10 on the list, it just to simply confirm that this thing does actually have a full structured workout support, which means you can download workouts from Polar Flow, which is their website via the smartphone app and whatnot, onto the watch and execute those. That includes running programs, so entire like half marathon and whatnot programs that you can pull onto this watch to go ahead and execute and bring you from a couch, in theory, up to a half marathon goal line or different race durations. Uh, that is in addition to any custom workouts that you create yourself on the web that you want to go ahead and plop onto the watch as well. Now, number 11 on the list is pretty darn interesting because this supports swimming, uh, not just in a pool and not just showing distance, but actually open water swimming. So you can go out in a lake or a pond or some other big ass body of water and go ahead and swim and it'll give you the GPS track for that swim which is not generally found on any kind of lower end watches. Generally speaking, open water swim functionality is saved for roughly 300 bucks and above. So to be at 199, that's not too shabby. However, there is a catch. If you're thinking of using this for triathlon, there is no multi-sport mode, which means you can't go from swim to bike to run. You'd have to go from swim, stop the watch entirely, go to bike, start the walk activity, stop the watch entirely, go to run, you get the whole point. It's kind of clunky, but that's how they convince you to spend more money for a Vanshed series watch. Now, last but not least, number 12 on the list, this will probably answer the most frequent question I'm gonna see here. No, it does not have music in it. There's no music, there's no maps, there's no contactless payment, all the things that you'd expect on really high-end watches or the Apple Watch, they are not here on this watch. On the flip side, this has way more fitness and sport functionality than the Apple Watch does uh, and a much more cohesive package. Sure, you can use third-party apps on the Apple Watch to go ahead and get different kind of workout functionality components on there, but not to the level or depth of this in terms of one cohesive package. Okay, there you go. Just a complete look at the Polar Ignite series. And yes, I said series because there are technically two watches here. Uh, there is this one here, the black one at 199, and then this one here, the white one, and some other colors, I think, too, at 229. The core difference is actually just the band itself. The 229 version includes the silicone strap, which is really nice and comfy. The 199 version includes this horrific TPU rubber crap strap. I'm not really a big fan of it. I've been rolling it for a number of days now and hope it would get better. And no, I'm, I'm not loving it at all. I love the watch. I think the watch is awesome. The functionality awesome. All the kind of stuff, which probably gets to the bigger picture here, is that I think what Polaro has done is super impressive from an overall standpoint um, in terms of the features they put in this and the thought behind these features. Most of these features are not seen anywhere else in the industry today. So it's cool to see them kind of pushing ahead on stuff. And I think the price point in general here is very, very aggressive. Uh, it's something we haven't seen Polaro or do for a couple of years and really just throwing down pretty cool stuff anyways check out my full post down in the description there plenty more information on this watch my thoughts accuracy testing all that kind of jazz with that thanks for watching again whack that like button at the bottom there or the subscribe button have a good one